World Financial Group offers entrepreneurs from all backgrounds the opportunity to start their own business on a level playing field. Dr. Yana Woodhouse, receiving the WCM Wall Street Pioneer Award by the United Black Wall Street of America, Inc., is one of those entrepreneurs. I see WFG and TFA as a place where African Americans with an entrepreneurial mindset can flourish. And the bonus, we help families and serve the communities across the country. To learn more about us, go to worldfinancialgroup.com. We are the sons and daughters of the soul. We are resilient and forever forward thinking. We ask for nothing else than the opportunity to live and to create the lives that we were meant to live. We want nothing but an equal chance at options and possibilities. The same possibilities and options to live out our potential as our fellow man. We want to be heard, understood, and expressive in our reality. We are the future. We are the creator. We are here. And you're listening to Urbanology with my dad, Tony Rogers, on WHCR 90.3 FM New York. Good afternoon. Tony Rogers here, your host for Urbanology, the Art of War. I hope all is well with you. Um, For those who may not know, I uh, have a sad note. Um, Harry Belafonte transitioned today. At least that's uh, what uh, is all on social media. So I would like to give my condolences to friends and and, and family of Mr. Belafonte. He was truly a giant. And uh, I'm sure that uh, his legacy will continue. He and Mr. Portier is uh, in heaven now, I'm sure, uh, braining energy as to continuing their work. And um, it's interesting. I have today a person who Uh, I've seen uh, grow, and I'm sure he has a lot of historic information as relates to uh, where many of those giants like uh, Sidney and and, and Belafonte and and so many other uh, stars really uh, did a lot of work in Harlem especially in the Harlem YMCA, but that's um, something that is probably another story at this point, but may be part of some of the conversation that we have with uh, a person who is known as Mr. Harlem. He has a a location, uh, the New Heritage uh, uh, Association, and he is um, now uh, part of the annual Harlem Late Night Jazz group because in his location, he also has Club Harlem, which uh, we celebrated uh, uh, 
the last day of the festival with a salute to John Coltrane, a wonderful event. But uh, I'd like for the listeners to and viewers to uh, meet uh, a person who's been dedicated to providing information about uh, the village of Harlem for, for many years, Mr. Bill Shoemaker, uh, also known as Mr. Harlem. Pleasure to be with you, Tony. Pleasure to be with you. Definitely um, always good to be in your presence. And you know that I'm a big fan of yours. <laughs> as I of yours, Bill. Uh, give the listeners, we're going to get into some of the things about new, uh, the your um, uh, work in tourism, but tell the listeners and the viewers a little bit about yourself. Who Who is Mr. Harlem? Uh, Mr. Harlem is a um, guy born and raised in Harlem his entire life and one who is um, really, really in love with the community's history. And I feel like um, when you're born in Harlem, you're born with a certain inheritance. You know, I'm not a Kennedy or... Um, any rich kid for that matter. But uh, in being born in Harlem, I feel like um, I am the heir to great inheritance and I'm just as rich as anybody else. And whenever I can use that natural inheritance called being from Harlem to preserve the community's history and to contribute to the local academy via the industry of heritage tourism, I feel like um, maybe um, a parent rent to live in the house of Harry Belafonte, a parent went to live in the house of Sammy Davis Jr., a parent went to live in the house of um, Sidney Poitier, um, a parent to live in the house of um, the Legacy of Harlem Week. Mm-hmm. Well, you actually, you, uh, I think I met you during Harlem. You were working with the Harlem Week program at one point of the chamber. Most definitely, yes. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm a big fan of, uh, it's a long story, um, but I'm a big fan of art. And when I first got my first apartment, uh, maybe around like 1997, um, I had always uh, seen those beautiful pieces of art that were done by people like um, a good friend, Adam Mullah, uh, and mm-hmm. other, you know, the art that articulated the um, all the programming. So I said, I wanted some of the art. And so um, I was looking for the Hall of Week office and lo and behold, I stumbled upon um, one West 125th Street. And I went to that building up there when you had the offices over there before you moved to 135th Street. Right. Um, Pamela Lee. And I met a dear person named um, Carrie Robinson. Mm. And I went in the office there and I said, hey, I want, I want some of these posters here. And they said, you just can't have the posters like that. I said, so what's going on here? And they said, there's a volunteer meeting going on. So I said, what's going on with that? And so Carrie Robinson said, um, you know, why don't you volunteer? I was working for City Bank at the time. And I thought to myself, if I volunteer, I could definitely get some of those posters. Well, <laughs> that led to me volunteering that summer and a few other summers. And at the time, I'm not thinking about tourism per se. And I'm working for Citibank. It's a long story, like I said, but um, I wanted to get involved with tourism by chance. And two organizations were very um, important in the very beginning. And that would be Mass Chit, Malcolm Shabazz, mm-hmm. and the Development Corporation, and also the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce. And that's what met you and um, and many other very influential people. Well, what allowed for you to take that leap of faith into becoming, uh, uh, which now is one of the most uh, uh, recognized tour guides in home? What what allowed for you to make that leap of faith from from a secure banking position? Well, I think it was the secure banking position that provided me with a whole bunch of training. Like, um, I was always in a sales position at the bank and, you know, the bank sends you to this class and that class and <clears throat> other training courses to help you sell their product effectively. And so when I decided that I wanted to get involved in tourism, I just, I had these skills I had gotten from the bank and I decided to use them on my, in my own way. And so I think that um, foundation from having a job, constantly having to present, talk, tell stories on behalf of the bank and selling the products. And so... I just parlayed them over into um, uh, uh, the, the tourism thing. And like I said, I had already been around it um, via the chamber of volunteering um, via Harlem and working at the bank simultaneously. So I said, working at the bank simultaneously, 
and I was going through the chamber. And then one day I decided that I wanted to do this um, uh, full time. And that's when I, again, um, it met um, some very important people that uh, mastered my Malcolm Shabazz and the Development Corporation. And I teamed that relationship with um, the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce. And I took a leap of faith and um, it was very good timing because this is the time when Harlem was like making that turn. As you know, Tony, you've know, been here for a long time in various capacities. Mm -hmm. um, but many probably remember like the mid nineties when people saying, oh, this is gonna happen, that's gonna happen. And Isaac Hayes is gonna do this and so forth and so on. There was so much excitement in the air. Some things happened, some, some things didn't. But this is the time when people were taking interest in coming to Harlem, especially our European brothers and sisters. And so um, I just happened to be here at that time, and then we ran into 9-11, which was a very precarious time. But we were able to, to get on the other side of that, just like we were able to get on the other side of the pandemic. And um, so, yeah, I'm, 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 it's the love of Harlem's history, I think, really, that um, gave me the interest in leaving my day job because it was something that I really enjoyed doing, and I had fun with it, and I loved talking about Malcolm X and Marcus Garvey. And it's a certain, how can you say, enthusiasm, euphoria, um, eureka moment, I guess, that happens when you fill yourself up with the culture of your own. Mm -hmm. that, of course, I don't know how to, are you, Tony, I'm sure you probably experienced this, just something that happens when you know that you come from a great place and you, see, I think that everybody wants to belong to an, uh, to an important group, whether mm -hmm. it be an exclusive golf club, or whether it be a fraternity or sorority, or whether it be the group that's, Originated in, in sexual orientation or whatever the case may be. So when one can say, I'm from Harlem, right? Um, Club Harlem is me. You know, I was born and raised out of this place. I remember there was rats and roaches and so forth and so on, but we didn't care because we was having too much fun with the fight hydrants and so forth and so on. And so when you have that in you, it may lead you to taking a leap of faith because you're doing what you love doing. And when I came across um, the environment that I was exposed to early on when I was volunteering at the Chamber of Commerce, when you had the event and you had all of the diversity people coming in from all of the organizations and you had a room that started out as a blank room within Lloyd, you guys turned into like some extravagant boardroom and just seeing all of that process take place and to be around that, um, I think I probably said to myself, yeah, I, I like that. I want, I want to be, I want, I want, I want to be, I want to be a part of that. And I never forget something, Tony. One night we were all in, I think we were all in Minnesink townhouse. Hmm. And the event taking place. And Lloyd was up there. And he was doing his masterful MC thing. You know, he's, he's, he's a very masterful MC, Lloyd Williams. Hmm. I said to Lloyd, I said, listen, I want to be like you. He whispered me to my ear. He says, no, you be better than me. <laughs> Lloyd told me, yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was it was initial interactions like that. And again, like I said, um, you know, Mass J. Malcolm Shabazz, another organization that I hold a super high regard because when I went to them, you know, I said, hey, listen, Mas, you know, I want to start meeting people here on this corner. And if you can imagine, Tony, um, one of the first tours I did was I adapted the autobiography to the streets of Harlem. Adam... Adam and Malcolm were people who I think were foreseeing. They knew that the images, the images had to be like captured because they knew the annals of history would want to record them. So when, when Malcolm wrote the book, he wrote it in a way that you can actually envision, envision the area. So I edited the book and I made a tour out of it. And uh, I went to the mosque, if you can imagine. Now, I gotta be honest with you, at this time, I don't really understand the mosque behind the scenes because the mosque has a reputation of being, you know, pro Malcolm and mean, pro Malcolm maybe being anti white. So here I am, I have this ad I put in the paper for people to come and take my Malcolm X tour, and like 40 something white people show up on the corner of the mosque. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm gonna get shot this day or something. <laughs> and uh, so I got all these people, and I gotta pull up this gig, and I gotta talk, and I ain't never done it like this before in my life. And the people showed up, but I gotta do it. Right, so I'm doing what I'm doing and so forth and so on. And I never forget one of the brothers in the mosque come out. And I'm thinking, this is it. Is I'm like, okay, I'm in trouble now. And the guy me, you saw something we didn't see. 
go through the job. I was like, really? Cool. So now I got to pull it together, right? And I got some stuff going on. I never did this before in my life, but I got it together. I pulled it together, and I started, and I ended it at 22 West, which is the restaurant that Malcolm will go to often. And at the end, I got a round of applause. I was like, wow. <laughs> so I continued my working with um, people like yourself, and you told me great stories about 1974, the first day of Harlem Day, and how it rained, and how it um, stopped raining at the right time, and it turned out to be a day that the weather permitted. And that day turned into a week, and that week turned into a month. And so I kept getting these stories from people like yourselves and having my own lifetime. And I tell you, you know, when we first started this tourism thing, I mean, there were people here doing tours before me. Of course, Chamber of Commerce, you guys are, of course, um, pioneers at this. So I don't have to speak to you about it. But when I got involved, Harlem is, is not the Harlem that we know today. And we got mentally ill people in the street today. But I think the community is more tolerant now of diversity and of like multi everything, you know, the ethnicity and the sexuality and most of it. And back then it was crazy. I had people say, what the hell are you doing, man? You, and throwing things at me. And I mean, I would have to go back to the people and say, hey, wait a minute, you know, hey, wait a minute. Remember the guy that was working by a second ago? All the white people? That was me. How you doing? Yeah, da, da, da. I have to talk to him and let them know what heritage tourism means for the community. You see, I'm not here to sell the property. And I point to a bus, I see that bus right there, got 30 something people on and all of those people pay somebody from downtown. Talking about you and me. And then before you know, I have to win this guy over and then keep doing this. And now I walk through Harlem now and I see people doing tours in various languages and so forth and so on. But I remember 20 years ago when that was probably not something that was happening. Right? Well, 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 again, uh, Neil, you have been able to weather the storm quite well. And this is. I believe very truly our time to begin to take advantage of all of the things that we work with. As I have mentioned to you before, uh, th we're developing a site, the Harlem Tourism Board, GoHarlem.org. And actually, you're on there. If you go to GoHarlem.org and, you know, uh, you're one uh, of the tour uh, companies that are there. And I want to actually make uh, 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 a plea to you to become uh, more involved in the overall uh, GoHarlem.org tourism uh, project, because we know now that a number of opportunities have presented themselves. We in uh, in June, uh, the new Marriott on 125th Street uh, should be open by that time. That will have an opportunity for groups now to come to Harlem, develop packages. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 and with that, the governor, uh, Governor Hoko, has uh, 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 initiated a uh, a program uh, that will be the rest of 2023 and uh, 2024 for part of the I Love New York uh, platform will focus on bringing African and Caribbean Americans to New York State because of the billion dollar industry that's there. So um, with all of those things happening, you know, Harlem is going to get a lot more uh, focus and mm -hmm. packages, tour packages, and all of those things will become uh, a lot more uh, plausible because we have someone, a place right next to the Apollo where people can stay. And based on your work, uh, New Heritage Tours will uh, take the lead from the tourism board component if you uh, agree to, to fill that that space as relates to uh, when people come to the tourism board, they will, who want to have tour packages and what have you. And even when we talk with the hotels, which we are doing now, um, New Heritage Tours will be the first in line to begin to evaluate how those things are taking place. There's a lot of stuff that uh, we've been working on for training tour guys, you know, Jackie Orange, 
uh, had started that project we were to start looking at now based on the fact that the tour opportunities will will become greater as an economic development program. And the things that you've experienced, you know, this was in training, understanding what to do, how to get a license. And plus you have a, 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 a location, which we'll have to talk about, uh, where people can gather and talk about different things and even do training. So this is our time. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been doing this for a long period of time, but it's important for us to seize the time. And, and one last thing, which you said that was extremely important, the GoHollem.org site that will list all of the entities that are taking place, all of the events, the, the restaurants, as many as possible. All we need is the content to put on the site. Mm -hmm. Will be helpful, obviously, for the tours, but for the people who are in the neighborhood, the people who are in Community Board 11 who may never have come to here, to go to a site and see that Club Harlem is doing a major event, come down to see it. Or if you want to have a tour, uh, check with uh, Harlem Heritage Tours. That mm -hmm. in itself, because Harlem, as you know, is a city within a city. Matter of fact, out of the four community boards, at least uh, actually each of the four, 9, 10, 11, and 12 community boards have uh, a population that's larger than some cities throughout the country. So when you put them together, it makes the greater Harlem area maybe about the 10th or 12th largest city in uh, America. So there's a lot of economic development opportunities that are going to take place. And people like yourself, <coughs> we want to, to uh, be able to uh, be on the front line with that. Sounds good to me. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. Tell, tell about, tell the list, the, the viewers and listeners. I, you know, uh, I, I ride Soul City and WACR, so sometimes I <laughs> tell the uh, audience, which is a good way to put it, about uh, new uh, heritage tours. What type of tours do you do? How can they reach you in order to get a tour? And what are some of the most popular tours that you do? Yes, um, website uh, where we can be reached is www.harlemheritage.com. <clears throat> um, I am Mr. Harlem. And my uh, email is Mr. Harlem at harlemheritage.com. We're located at 104 Malcolm X Boulevard. We are practically right around the corner from Masjid Malcolm Shabazz, one of the most well-known faith-based organizations in the city, if not the world, I should say. Uh, so many of you who know of the building, be on the corner of the big green sphere on top. We're practically right across the street from them. Uh, the number two and three train come practically immediately to our door, which makes right our- <laughs> Yeah, you go two and three, we're right here a couple of yards from, literally a couple of yards from the train stop. When you get out, um, we've been around here, um, as Tony mentioned, for over 20 years doing these tours of Harlem. And some of the tours that we do, um, we, 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 we pay um, very close attention to um, being like cultural doctors. When you go to a physician, they you know diagnose you, they try to figure out what's going on with you, they ask you what are your symptoms, and they try to find the best um, situation for you. So when you come to us, you tell us what it is that you have a need for culturally, and we have friends like Tony Rogers, Harlem Tourism Board, and I can just go on and on other friends that we have in the community who we can reach out to and say, listen, we have this particular request. We have to, we have to you know, curate this event. And so, um, for instance, uh, over the previous um, 10 days or so, working with um, a good friend, Dakota Pippen, at Harlem Late Night Jazz, um, you know, uh, we took a look at some jazz history and we realized that March 17th, and April the 22nd are the two recording days, recording sessions for Miles Davis' Kind of Blue. Mm -hmm. April 22nd is when he dropped full album. 
So therefore, we had a celebration of the dropping of the Kind of Blue full album, which went on to become quadruple, quadruple platinum, one of the most well-known albums in the history of album sales, period. So we curated an event where we had a, um, a trumpet summit. And if you look at my Instagram page, now to my social media, if you look at my Instagram page, the first pic on the page that's pinned is video of the trumpet summit here in my place under the um, Club Harlem awning, the blue light, and it made for a really cool event. And we kind of made it so you can actually feel like you're in the studio with those guys back then. So I took the long route to say, in terms of the kind of uh, tools that we developed, we, you know, we got. I can't really disclose the calls that we got today. But um, left it in the door. Oh, thank you, thank you. So I can't really, um, I can't really. Uh, oh, sorry, I had a. Sorry, I can't even really disclose the, the nature of the call that we had um, today. But we're going to create something that's going to involve theater and tourism. I had a call from a theater company, so it's going to be really interesting. So anyway, the curation of um, special events is what we do. And then besides that, Tony, there's um, the Civil Rights Tour, then there's the Hall of Renaissance Tour, and then there's the Sugar Hill Tour. And there's all these different tours that we do, and they pertain to like major segments of our cultures, his community's culture. Civil rights is huge. I mean, right outside my door, as you know, Tony, there's the mosque where Malcolm X was a leader, there's the church associated with Dr. King, there's Adam Clayton Park Union Boulevard, there's A. Philip Randall Square. These are all great civil rights leaders who come from Harlem. And so therefore people have an appetite for that particular subject matter. So without being long-winded, um, curation of whatever it is that you want, and then we have some house tours that we conduct as well. Now, um, when when did you uh, obtain the space that you're in now, which is a, a very nice space as a storefront, and uh, it has a great deal of pictures, uh, history, which is what you were looking for, but when did you acquire that space? We've been here for about like 15 years now, a um, long time, but it's just now, Tony, that I'm finally in a position where I know what it is that I want to do. I know how I want the space to function. Um, I've been able to put together piece by piece. Never got any funding from anyone. Um, never got any city funding. Never got any money from any politicians, nobody. Everything, go out, work, bring in money, go out, work, bring in money, collect some intellectual property, figure out what I want to do. And finally, I have a room here that I think is pretty interesting. People come in, they feel the warmth, they, um, there's pictures on the wall all over the place that reflect our local history, our local heritage. Uh, there's a big screen up behind me where we show video. Um, there's another big um, screen for the storefront screens here. But we project video against the screen in such a way that the storefront windows turn into projection screens themselves. So um, this is my place here. And this is where just last weekend there was our jazz night a Harlem jazz nights a Harlem late night jazz fest and it was great man we had a good time and so working with again like i said the quota pippet and those guys um we were able to curate some really cool um events you were sitting um, you were sitting practically where i'm sitting at right now tony yesterday and you were here uh was it yesterday or the day before yesterday actually you were here with us and so this is where i am you know and um, i'm very pleased and I'm very blessed to be able to have this several hundred square foot space. Be here, like I said, Tony, for about 15 years, very close to the subway. And so, um, yeah, man, we get people coming from all over the world. And um, they're looking for some place to walk in and they can say, I'm in Harlem. <laughs> they want to feel like they're in Harlem. They want to see something, some pictures, some imagery, they have some sound. And um, that's what it is. And, um, and for, the, for what it's worth, um, not that it's mandatory, but it also helps uh, tremendously so when people see that the venue is owned by somebody who is actually from the community, right? Born and raised here their whole life and, you know, taking a tour where not only do you see the sites conveyed, like you would convey them from like a text, the book, but to be able to walk down the street and say, hey, this is the guy who helped found Harlem Beat, you know. Hey, Tony Rogers, talk to the people. And you come over and you, you know, you talk about, you know, what it was like back then and and let's talk about your professional career at CCNY and what makes Tony Tony and all the tourism board. They got to know Tony to do that, right? And so, um, not to say that people, I mean, you know a lot of people, Tony, of course, but 
Um, yeah, so that behind the scenes in that, you know, um, culturally oriented experience that people want so that they feel like they got the community's history from the community. So when you come inside of a place like this and I'm the owner, born and raised here, it's kind of like going inside of like um, the African Nationalist Memorial Bookstore, or maybe going inside of the old um, um, Black Liberation Bookstore, or maybe going inside of um, the Baba Tuji, or the Tunji Cultural Center where you walk the side, it wasn't, you know, black or down or whatever, but the guy who owned it was a really authentic pictures up. He had sincere heart about educating the people. There was literature that was around. Sometimes literature had a little water stain because it was watery or whatever, but he didn't throw it away. He kept it there. So the throwback to that kind of aesthetic um, when I was a kid here in Harlem is what we take seriously and just using what you got to get what you want. And the people who come in, actually they're looking for authenticity. It's the real thing, right? That's the thing. And that's, I think that's a big word here. Um, authenticity, you know. Um, <laughs> Neil, uh, can people uh, rent your space for events or use yeah. your space? Because, you know, there are not a lot of spaces like yours that are now uh, owned by us that can be affordable for groups to do things. Uh, so uh, from time to time, do you kind of let uh, groups come in and, and do events? Yeah, and all the time. The programs? That, yeah, and that's, and that's a good, good, good question, um, um, Tony. You know, I guess you could say there's four things that we like to do here. One would be, of course, um, visit the information. Somebody wants to know what's going on in Harlem. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know today we have Harlem Week, or tomorrow we're going to have um, Juneteenth or whatever the case may be. So mm -hmm. the, 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 the providing the information, the providing the right. cultural content. And our window here, to starting tonight, as a matter of fact, starting tonight, guys, all you're walking back and forth in front of 104 Malcolm X Boulevard, you're going to see projected against the window video that projects Harlem's history and things to do in Harlem. So that's the first thing. Secondly, uh, we manufacture our own merchandise, right, in the back, you know. Thirdly, um, of course, some place to come and worry yourself for the tour you're taking on the big screen back there. And uh, you probably see a big screen back there. There's video that's shown and there's pictures probably around the wall, you know, on, on, I don't know if you can see them, they're on easels. And those easels that you see have photos on them, and those photos pertain to the theme of that given tour for today. So I think we were doing civil rights today. So you might see imagery of like on these easels of Malcolm X and local civil rights history. And up on the screen, they use, there'll be video that will complement the pictures. And lastly, I mentioned three things. And lastly, is the you know the community stuff where you know it may be a repass. Um, unfortunately, because somebody passed away, or maybe it's a baby shower, somebody's born, or maybe it's a graduation, or maybe it's just people in the neighborhood who, who want to watch the fight and see if Tank Davis can beat the guy again. You know that. that kind of <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I, I, I think I saw. Uh, I, you know, Matt uh, McCoy, Soul City. They do a lot of. Uh, filming uh, about different things, not only in Harlem, but with a focus at Harlem. Uh, when I was at the Cold Train event, as well as uh, the one for, for Miles, because I was there twice, as you, uh, there's probably a lot of opportunities to, to, to broaden the scope of Harlem do what you're doing using uh, forums like Soul City and 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 being able to project uh, to people who um, may not have understood how they might be able to experience Harlem in a way that you can provide for them. Uh, I, I learned the power, you know, you know the this whole COVID lockdown had a yin and yang effect to it as everything. Well, one of the things that I learned, as you know, Harlem Week used to be a month. It started from a day to a month. And then the lockdown, everything had to really be done through social media in some cases. But what that resulted in for the last two years, um, uh, Sunshine Sacks is one of the major uh, marketing entities in 
uh, New York uh, in the world, actually, because they they are an uh, international group. But they have partnered with us for uh, a long period of time, and their tracking of the impressions, a billion people were able to experience Harlem in some kind of way. Uh, actually, this year was 1.6 billion people. So what that means is that events like Harlem Week and and many other events that take place with a forum like a goharlem.org, I have to push that, billions of people will be able to experience what we're doing, what we're talking about now. I mean, right now, we're being able to be seen, thousands of people are seeing you and what you have to offer. And now that we have these uh forums, as well as the fact that tourism is coming back alive again, uh, I think this summer will be really the first summer since 2019 that people feel will feel really comfortable about uh, coming out. Last summer was pretty cool. I mean, it was, you know, because people, but they were still kind, kind of, uh, you know, the, the pandemic, you know, put a, a hold on a lot of minds. But I think this summer should be really when the whole tourism uh, components start to really flower again. And, well, I, yeah, go ahead. I'm, oh, you know, I, I, I'm sorry to cut you off. Um, I was watching the news before uh, you guys came on, and today they mentioned that I think it's the first day that MTA patronage is back at pre-pandemic levels. Like people taking the train is back to normal. Like the same numbers this time before the pandemic this year is, mm-hmm. is you know, is people. So I, I said it to say that, you know, um, indicators that what you're saying is right, right? Indicated mm-hmm. back on the trains, pre-pandemic numbers again, right? So I think that's a, a, test, that's a, a testament to the fact that you're, what you're saying is right about uh, the upcoming summer season, and 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 Neil, your knowledge or history of the community. I know you grew up here, but how did you become so knowledgeable about the different locations in Harlem and the different histories of the people who? Uh, are legendary in Harlem. Uh, what were some of the sources that you used in order to uh, improve your ability as a tour guide? You know, I'm just one of those lucky guys, man, who, um, who um, I don't know, man. I mean, I think ought to be day because uh, I don't know, but I mean, like when I was in the first time I could really remember, like, really being about the history of the community, I must have been. I don't know, probably fourth grade. And I say I'm lucky because I had a mother who was like on me. She didn't have the, the strongest education herself, but she was on me by having education. The teacher said, you know, if I mess up and I don't do this two page paper, that um, she was going to my mom. And that meant that she was going to come to school with a belt. <laughs> never a fun thing. Never was a fun thing. And she was unpredictable when she would show up. So I didn't know when she was coming. So the teacher said, listen, you have to go and you have to write a paper, two page paper, double space about anything you want to write about, but you got to do it. If you don't, call your mother. I said, oh man, I got to do this. So I went to the library. I was like Fourth Street over by um by the park, my Mars Park. Got to find a book about it. I don't know what I'm going to do. I saw a book there, lower shelf, never forget it. it. has six magical letters down the binder. Tony, letters with H-A-R-L-E-M, Harlem. <laughs> yeah, I'm reading it. It was like a book, you know, the books in the library back then, they had the cellophane paper, that was, seemed like it was a thousand years, years old and it's, you know, like onion skin kind of cracking off of it. So like took it and I opened it up and it was about people who lived in Harlem and and all of these legendary people who I didn't know lived in Harlem, in Harlem. And I've seen it. And then it said that Sammy Davis Jr., the candy man, lived in 131st Street. I think it was building number 46. That was my father's building. I was like, wow. If the candy man lived in this building here, maybe some candies in the building. 
<laughs> in the buildings. My head is, you know, young kid. But then I'm like, wow. So I kept reading this book, and I forget. The book said, and Sam Davis Jr. had a nickel in his pocket, and he had to make a decision, either keep the nickel and eat with it and have fun, or he walked all the way from Times Square. You know, so he kept the nickel a lot of times and walked from Times Square. That was impressive to me. Again, I mentioned to you, now I'm a part of a special group. My father lives in the same building where Samuel Davis is from. I must be a part of a cool group called Being From Harlem. <laughs> and next thing, that, that kind of thing happened. And so, you know, every, every time something like that happened, and I saw something about Harlem, I would read it, never knowing that I'd be a tour guide or anything like that, but just the, knowing that I'm a part of a special club. And I forget one other thing that happened that was very interesting and very impactful. It must have been now I'm about 14 now at this time, at 14, 15. And we are at Aaron Davis Hall. And it's a day of break dancing and all. And Aaron Davis Hall, they, they, they got the dance state of Harlem of it doing the presentation about ballet. And Arthur Mitchell was on the stage. He said, who gonna come up here and dance? So all of us kids are break dancers, right? We want to be anyway. We don't know what we're doing. We trust in our heads. None of us, <laughs> right? So we run up there on the stage. We're trying to do head spins and everything. We don't know what we're doing. Arthur says, everybody who came on stage now gets a scholarship to the dance of Harlem. <laughs> I Harlem, because I want to play basketball in the summertime, and I'm good enough to make the team. And that's what that's my that's what I'm doing. So I don't know what you're talking about. Got to stay. American ballet dancer, whatever the case may be, but new shoemakers playing ball this summer. So cool. He holds up on my own. Well, the dance in Harlem called my mother. Problem for me. <laughs> You're going to dance in Harlem. And I'm like, Mom, that's not going to happen. I'm talking to a brick wall. She does what she wanted to do. She grabs me and takes me downtown. And never forget, Tony, to a store called Capizio's. Where they sell ballet stuff. <laughs> Slim tr sl the, 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 um, the, the tights. The tights. That's, yeah. The and the special shirt with the collar, the V-neck, with the, with the, with the collar, with the open chest and everything. And uh -huh. got all of the stuff. And she takes me to the dance in the parlor. And she said, you better stay here. Because if you don't stay and I find out that you left, you know what it is. <laughs> Okay, all right, cool. So I'm a little older now, so I can do my own thing, but still I don't want the, I don't want no smoke. <laughs> all right, cool. I'm like, okay, Mom, she give me five dollars every day, or whatever, a couple of dollars every day. If that's the case, the, 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 the um the, the transportation, all the way up to, to the dance of Harlem, all the way up into the heights of Harlem. I ain't never been up in Sugar Hill. I ain't never seen a part of Harlem before in my life. I decide I'm keeping the money and I'm walking up there. <laughs> up through Harlem, through Sugar Hill every day, and I am fascinated by the area, and it's like something out of a postcard and a home. That's the city right. college and all of those places. Yeah, I would walk through there because I went mm -hmm. to school actually at PS one twenty nine mm -hmm. with John F. Finley School attached to City College. That's why I went to school before I moved from there downtown to force the project. So I knew convent, but I know convent past 129th. <laughs> I knew convent up to 129th and I turned back the other way to the 125th. Now I'm going from convent 129th, 130th, past Aaron Davis Hall. I'm walking through the Gothic buildings and everything, but you working at the time. I'm walking down convent Avenue. I'm seeing the Grange, I'm seeing all of this stuff. And I had to be up there at 10 o'clock in the morning to go to the of Harlem. So you know how it's, it's still sleepy up there and it's beautiful and everything. <laughs> <laughs> that era was like, oh, wow. That's another one of those moments that made me feel like, what? I'm a part of a special club. So these things just kept happening to me. Like, the kids just kicked in. And then when I started volunteering with the Chamber of Commerce, now I'm around Lloyd and you guys. And I don't know nothing about serving no drinks. But I knew that if I volunteer and I was the bartender, I would meet everybody, but I didn't know how to make no drinks. <laughs> a guy named Ed, he, God bless his said, God bless his dad, his name was Ed something. Ed he, Greenwich. Older gentleman, right? Ed Greenwich. 
as British, he said, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and that sounds just like it. <laughs> you don't make no drink like that. And he showed me how to make like Bacardi and Cokes and stuff in the spot. So whenever I volunteered the chamber, I wanted the bartender job. After Ed Grinch showed me how to bar to make some drinks. And then now I'm around, I'm in this atmosphere and there's all of this Hollywood like atmosphere and everything and all these black people looking good and the diversity person from the Bisco and this and the other. And I'm serving drinks and trying to get business cards. And then I have the idea about tourism. And so now I'm like, yo, I got the banking experience. I know how to speak, I know how to present, I use the over here projector. This is before technology. This is when people still need a brochure, you need hard copy paper, you try to get your brochure done, everything is paper now. But I had some skills and I started and yeah, then, then I started reading a lot. Read, see, when you're doing something that you like, you do it all day. You know, people say something's true to the phone, you know, you do what you love. You, so read was no problem. So it, was, it was actually fascinating. Who did this? Who did that? And the idea of being able to locate where things happen became like a people play video games. I started playing history and it became very intriguing. And so, um, so with the, I've been doing it for a long time. Same thing, same passion. So now I got a lot of information in my head, you know. <laughs> well, you definitely do. Uh, when you uh, started uh, your, your uh, age, your, your group, your, your tour group, were there many other people who look like you? I know that the chamber actually, I believe, because uh, we started uh, Harlem Renaissance Tours. I don't know whether you remember Harlem Renaissance Tours. but It was a guy named Ron Spence. Yeah, Ron Spence, who passed away. Ron, I brought Ron in. And, you know, Ron Spence is, and his sister, Maxine Spence, was, was, was a part of that. And, and we would do tours uh, and actually all of the major tour groups that are present now would take uh, a bus ride with us. Harlem, during Harlem Week, we used to do something at the City Hall. Oh, yeah? And from there, we would have busloads of journalists from around the world to ride through Harlem. And that's how we started going to the various different locations and, 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 and the like. And uh, it was that type of journalism that allowed for people to begin throughout the world to begin to see that Harlem was, 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 was coming back. And then in 1979, we put together the first map of all of the various different places in Harlem. I still have a copy of that, that map. It was the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce, which is how that, that map, when it came out, uh, a number of uh, us went into the city archives to find out information about Harlem. And that's where we realized that the, the geographic locations of Harlem, at one time, there was a map that went from what 90, 96th Street to 179th Street from river to river. And that encompassed all of the community boards. And that's how we got the greater Harlem area. Because as you know, at one point, when you talk about Harlem, we talk about 125th Street, maybe, you know, uh, but you didn't put Columbia University in, in the Harlem. You didn't, you didn't uh, understand that Grant's tomb was, was in Harlem. Uh, and even um, you went up to, to Washington Heights. There are many uh, Jamal Mansion. Uh, George Washington says, I'm at Harlem Heights overlooking, because <laughs> that was one of their first victories at, 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 at Grant's tomb. My God. So, so it's been a while. Keep that. Hold them a Hold them a second. They ran and put it down on me. Yes, it twisted, man. You know, let you use it. Hannibal, what's that? Love you, Hannibal. I'm sorry about that tone. Go ahead. And, and so it's been a while. And one of the things that I love about you, man, is that with a storefront, you have a direct relationship with the community. Yeah, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> Even through the jazz thing, people will come in. And, and that's important. And it's important for many reasons. Plus, 
Because once you embrace the community, the community embraces you. So, you know, that is is very important for a number of different reasons, as you know. Tony, Tony, what time has you got you got there? Huh? Uh, what time you got? Yeah, well, we're about ready to wrap up. At actually, uh, Neil, because I know that you got a lot of stuff that's happening. Back. I wanted uh, you to my phone, my phone. The thing I can't see the top of it because of the the. the... Anyway, yeah, but no, Tony, it's always a pleasure talking with you. No question, but I'm looking forward to working with you with Go Harlem. And again, like I said, when I said to you that I'm a big fan of yours. Um, and I tell you my history as it pertains to tourism, uh, you guys are part of it. Um, before I even got involved in tourism, you know, those days I was volunteering with the Chamber of Commerce, it gave me a behind the scenes look at tourism. And I got to I can't, I mean, between you and Master Michael Shabazz and the Development Corporation coming from that faith-based organization, yeah, you guys are a part of the story, seriously. And when I was able to look at tourism from behind the scenes as a volunteer of the chamber, I knew I wanted to be involved with that. And I knew this was cool. It felt great. It seemed to be so many important black people in the room, influential people. And to be honest with you, at the time, I was aspiring to be that. I wanted to be one of those industry leaders, one of those head of the diversity initiative for one of those companies. I wanted to be Lloyd. I wanted to be you. You know, the way you guys carry you, yourself. As Mr. Lloyd said, you, 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 you be better. We have a couple of minutes. Let the audience know how they can reach you, the best way to reach you, whether it's phone, email, or uh, uh, um, any of the other social media uh, vehicles. Yes, uh, you can meet me. You can reach me through. Um, oh, yes, a few interesting things going on, guys. Um, one is. Um, I'm going to be working with um, the Tourism Board, Harlem Tourism Board, and other organizations, Harlem Tourism Board particularly, uh, in providing, um, when you read a book about a place, many times you want to visit the place, but we're going to have it where you're going to read books about Harlem, and you can read it from anywhere around the world with us together, the Harlem Heritage Book Club. Then you can come to Harlem and go through the pages of the book. For instance, all will read the autobiography of Malcolm X around the world. But then we're going to come to Harlem and go through the sites associated with the book and visit the mosque and visit the place where the first gatherings took place and visit the YMCA where he went first. And everything he writes about the book, you're going to be able to visit those sites. But incrementally, we're going to have like book club meetings online. And you can actually come. There's one that we're going to do that's going to be very interesting, guys. Harlem on my mind, 69. Tony, I'm sure probably is familiar with the exhibition that took place at the Metropolitan Museum of Life, mm -hmm. the Museum of Art, in 1969, where you know there was a big um, upset community of artists who felt like their art was not in these lily white oak um, 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 art institutions. So the Met said, we're going to answer that by having a show called Harlem on my mind, which is going to feature um, the Photo, the photography of James Van Z, and it was done in such a way that you didn't have typical like art on walls. There was multimedia. There was like oversized print support this one, and people said that ain't no art. What is that? That ain't. And the people were crazy. And there was a big like 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 to do about that, um, and people were upset. But what it did do is it brought to light the legacy of James Van Z. So what we're going to do is we are going to go back to the Met. And we're going to recount those days when folks are upset about the art not being on the walls. And we're going to, but before we go to the Met, we're going to read the book called Harlem On My Mind, which is the catalog book for the show. And the book has been used as a teaching um, text for a whole bunch of people because it tells the story of Harlem from 1900 to 1968, which is the years in which the show at the Met would tell the story of. And so you read Harlem On My Mind, around the country and you read all of the stuff about the community's history from 19 to 1969 and then we go to the Met and we talk about what it was like to be in 1969 and then we come down the Museum Mile. Because you have to come from the Museum Mile from the Met to get to Harlem. We're going to pass the Frick. We're going to pass the Guggenheim. We're going to talk about what it must have been like at those institutions for the Black artists in 1969. But we come across 110th Street 
we had the opportunity via the book that we read online to learn about Harlem's history from 1900 to 1968, all those sites associated with what's in the book. And you can now do the turn of the century, you can do great migration, you could do Harlem Renaissance, you could do Harlem civil rights, Harlem hip hop, and so forth and so on. It's a long winded presentation I'm giving you here, but it's gonna make sense via our Harlem Heritage Book Club. So we're gonna release that tonight. I'm gonna send a link to Tony. Tony's gonna send it to you. You have to be the book with us and then take the tour. Well, uh, again, my brother, one, I, I'm going to come by and, and look at the windows tonight. What, what time is that going to start? Once it gets dark, right? Uh, yeah, I have a tour to do. I'm going to leave you. I'm going to meet some people at 5. I'll do a tour from 5 to 6. Then I'm coming back. I'm coming on at 8. Uh -huh. And uh, the other thing is give your phone number and email. Okay, cool. Um, so phone number is 212-280. 7888 cell phone, which most of my calls go from my main line to my cell phone. Cell phone 646 302 1575. Well, thank you, my brother. I know that you, you have uh, to meet some people pretty soon and to get back. And there's a lot of things you're doing tonight. I know how busy you are, so I really appreciate you taking this time to, to be on. Uh, Neil Shoemaker, a.k.a. Uh, Mr. Harlem, Harlem Heritage Tours, uh, right on the corner of 116th Street. You can't miss it. Uh, once you get out of the number two, number three, uh, go to the website. All of the things that uh, Neil talked about will be on his website and eventually on the goharlem.org uh, website. And we'll make sure that if you want a tour, uh, you go to Mr. Harlow at HarlemHeritageTours.com. Thank you, Neil. We appreciate you. And uh, uh, I'll walk by around 8 o'clock to watch the window. Okay. That's the name of a good brother. Talk to you soon. See you tonight, okay? Okay. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. So, uh, again, uh, we've been talking to uh, a brother that uh, has really allowed for hundreds of people to learn about the history of Harlem. He's been doing it for over 20 years now. He has a wonderful uh, location, storefront uh, location. We had mentioned the fact that there was a 10-day a, a, a jazz festival, the first one, uh, Dakota Pippins and his group, the Late, Light, Late Night Jazz uh, Organization. Uh, and it was, for me, it was a little tiring because I don't hang as much as I used to, but every night, about three or four venues uh, uh, were there. We'll probably have some of those venues on uh, the show at, at a period of time because as it gets warmer, I'm sure that uh, uh, I will be out with knowing that they're there now. I didn't know that before. And we'll we'll focus on that. So, uh, uh, oh, and uh, if you go to goharlem.org, we are going back to Senegal October the 16th to the 29th. Uh, you'll see information about that. We'll probably do something uh, around June to to promote it more so. But uh, if you want information about that, you can either go to goharlem.org or you can. Uh, uh, send an email to Harlem Tourism Board at uh, gmail.com. So I'd like to thank Matt McCoy and uh, the, the the Soul City team for, again, giving us a forum. Uh, I'd like to thank, again, Neil for the work that he's done. And, uh, again, uh, I'd like to thank everyone who has taken time out of their busy schedule uh, to watch this particular show, and uh, God willing, we'll see you next week. Uh, take care, and uh, this is Tony Rogers wishing you the rest of a wonderful evening. This is Kia Rogers, and you're listening to Urbanology with my dad, Tony Rogers, on WHCR 90.3 FM New York.